Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem. That's all I got. <laughs> uh, shout out to Jason for the cowboy hat, borrowing there, because I feel like if you're going to sing A Beautiful Star of Bethlehem, um, you definitely need to wear a cowboy hat and sing it out of the corner of your mouth. Um, hopefully nobody gets mad. I love Oh Beautiful Star of Bethlehem. That's one of my favorite Christmas songs. Um, good morning, Mount Olive, by the way. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, let's get right into it here. Trying to stay around the five or six minute mark like most of the guys have. Uh, so today, right on cue, talking about Bethlehem, that, that song has been in my mind all week long. So I thought, you know, we might as well open up with Oh Beautiful Star of Bethlehem. Um, so now, you know, if nothing else out of today, you're going to feel better about your singing voice. So uh, my verse for this week uh, is Micah 5.2. I'm uh, going to talk about the joy of Christmas here. And Micah 5.2, we'll just get right into it, says, But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. And, you know, like a lot of um, Christmas verses, you know, some of the guys we've been in, Isaiah 9, um, Jay did today, Jeremiah, um, it's just been really good. Um, I think it seems like Christmas verses just have a, a special, it's kind of like the Psalms we were talking about a few weeks back. Um, there's just this like peace to them, um, even maybe more so, or at least as much as a lot of other verses in the Bible. And, and this is no exception here in Micah. Um, five two. So, you know, it made me start thinking, <clears throat> why Bethlehem? And and I kind of searched a little bit of stuff on the, on the internet, um, and there's quite a few people who it seemed had the same question. And so, you know, of all the places that Jesus could have been born, um, Bethlehem is definitely not at the top of the list. And so, just a quick kind of three points here. Really, the third one is is kind of what I thought was. Um, Kind of what stuck out to me the most and, and and reading some other commentaries i think they agreed people a lot smarter than me agreed with so uh but the first one was it was a fulfillment of prophecy this prophecy in micah uh led to here in luke 2 uh, chapter 2 verse 4 says and joseph also went up from galilee out of the city of nazareth into judea into the city of david which is called bethlehem because he was the of the house and lineage of david so, you know, and I won't go into it because I'm not qualified to do so, but, you know, of all the hundreds of prophecies that, that had to come true for Jesus to be who he said he was and who the Old Testament said he would be, um, I think that's just awesome if you think about all the things that had to come together. You know, Caesar, um, you know, putting forth um, everything he put forth to make Joseph and Mary have to travel uh, to Bethlehem and the timing of it, and it's just so awesome how God worked and moved in that fulfillment of prophecy. Um, number two, right on cue there at, at the end of that verse, the lineage of David, um, Jeremiah 23, 5 says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, and I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Um, and so, you know, he was going to be, um, Jesus was predicted to be, was prophesied to be uh, of the house of David, and he was. Um, I think that's awesome how that comes about too. You know, you think of all the lineage, and of course those those lineages sometimes are hard to read. We skip over them uh, there at the beginning of Matthew, and but uh, all of the pieces that came together uh, for Jesus to be who He said He was. But I think you know, to me, I put those in there. But to me, the the third point here uh, is really what hit me. You know, why Bethlehem? Why choose this little little un, kind of unknown town, um, smaller? You know, it says though thou be little in that verse. In Micah, and, and I think, and Brother Brett taught Wednesday night on the humble king, and, and so I kind of stole that from him here. Uh, but you know, two points here the weak made strong and humble king. I think the reason to me um, that Jesus came and, and used Bethlehem was the reason he did everything. It was um, to show that he, that God, that Jesus can take anything, no matter how small, uh, and, and make that into something amazing. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Uh, this is kind of the verse that came to my mind when I was thinking about this. This is just the first part of it. But it says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. I think that's a big part of why, you know, and of course, who am I to, to, to guess? But it, just to me, why why Bethlehem? Because, because it was small. Because, um, you know, he 
raised the king out of Bethlehem. And it wasn't some big city that could boast about, you know, well, the reason that we were chosen is because we were so big. And it wasn't that. It was this small Bethlehem. The reason it was a manger is, you know, the, no one could brag that he chose our big, uh, you know, um, inn or whatever. It was just that everything Jesus did, the, all the servant things that Brother Brett talked about on Wednesday night just really hit me with this same point here in why Bethlehem. And I think it's pretty obvious that he's making the point that, you know, I can use the lowest of the low, the weakest of the weak, and I can make them uh, big through me. And so I'll end here with a quote from John Piper. I thought this was awesome. There, it was a really like a whole paper, um, but this was my favorite from it. He says, the deepest meaning of the littleness and insignificance of Bethlehem is that God does not bestow the blessings of the Messiah, the blessings of salvation, on the basis of our greatness or our merit or our achievement. He does not elect cities or people because of their prominence or grandeur or distinction. When he chooses, he chooses freely in order to magnify the glory of his own mercy, not the glory of our distinctions. So let us say with the angels, glory to God in the highest, not glory to us. We get the joy. He gets the glory. I thought that was awesome. So uh, remember that today, guys. Um, as we go into this Christmas season, remember that we get the joy and we need to give God the glory. So I hope you all enjoyed that today. Um, and you guys have an awesome Christmas. If I don't get to see you before then, hopefully we'll see you Sunday at church. But we love you guys. Have a great day.